So I'm here trying to, you know, get my hair um, done and I am doing some studies, right? The, a thought came to me some time ago that we can think we are hearing the voice of God and it's actually our unhealed soul speaking. And that thing kind of bothered me. I am here doing these studies on a course, right, about mental health. No, I'm at an era of uh, mental disorders. And I am seeing where you have some mental health issues that uh, will cause you to have some very intrusive thoughts. And it just, you know, reminded me of the thought that came to me before that the Holy Spirit said that you can be hearing the voice of God and it's actually your um, trauma experience speaking, like those intrusive thoughts speaking. Because uh, I remember at times in past when I would have a particular thought or understanding and i'm sure that this is the heart of god or the mind of god on a particular thing and then next time like probably a couple years after i get a revelation and i realize that that thing which i thought don't make, it don't make sense anymore and i'm like whoa this is in relation to it that many times we can be seeking God about things in our lives, right? And we are hearing this thing. We're hearing this thing. And it's our soul being broken that's speaking. Like, for example, you could be... <sighs> oh my God, for example, you could be praying for a car or a house. And then... Like you hear the voice, a voice said to you, no, 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 no. And you are hearing this thing consistently. And then because you're hearing it so consistently, you believe it's God. But then it is not God. It could be that possibly in your childhood, you were um, attacked in a house, right? You were attacked in a house or the house burnt down right and you have this fear of probably owning your own house or even living by yourself you understand and this fear because it's cautioning you it's actually cautioning you because of that experience so your mind has now the narrative that if you live in your own house or you live by yourself this same thing is going to happen and so that anxiety is now paired with OCD of um, intrusive thoughts, you know, bombarding your mind, trying to caution you when actually in reality, this thing just happened once in your life. But because it was so um, dominant, it was traumatic, it was life changing, it was very frightening. It did a great rewrite in an area of your mind. And then no, you hadn't taken the time to rewrite that part of your mind. If we look throughout the word of God, the word of God speaks a lot to the mind. We, we don't understand it in a church. We, we only preach out certain things, but we don't understand how to kind of put it in, in a form of mental help assistance. You know, I'm just throwing out words out there. We are not able to see that it's a psychological thing that the Lord is saying that's going on. You understand the highest place that the enemy attacks is our mind. What the enemy wants to get is our mind. He wants us to get us disconnected, right? Throughout the Bible, you can see where God is empowering people to be strong and be courageous and to believe in him. You know, we see Gideon where Gideon was um, 
what 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 was fearfully thought himself small right we see joshua where he thought himself small and insignificant we see where moses moses was insecure based on his speech you understand and the enemy used that against him right and sometimes it's not even a spiritual thing but it's because of experience there is a mental rewrite probably he was teased probably um because others around him spoke fluently and he couldn't he felt himself less than we see david right he felt down and depressed many times and that's how the psalms was written you know most of it was written by him where he felt lost when when he had to be running from saul for his life you understand we see where hannah she was mighty god she felt less than she felt insignificant she felt like she wasn't a woman because she could not give birth you understand and how it got her down and depressed but she pushed in prayer for what um she believed is hers right there are so many areas of the word that you see even elijah a powerful man of god he caught he said rain no rain now for three years and no rain for that's a powerful man and then he got depressed he went into exile right he, he, he ran for his life and wanted um to 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 commit suicide he wanted god to to end his life right there's a lot of mental health um situations throughout the bible and god shows us how in his word that we can you know um be delivered from these circumstances and situations and be healed when elijah was in the the um was in depression and he went away hiding from jezebel hey god never come and rough him up i said well you know you're a powerful man of god and what what go on yes so he was there for about three years he, he was there depressed and god just sent you know raven and sophie they come and feed him and look after him because he needed time you understand i think as a people of god as a church we miss it a lot we we don't understand this thing and that is why there's so much of um flaring up of mental health issues even now it was there and it was um very evident but you because of the consistency of it not being treated it being a taboo it not being talked about people um feeling like they are not um whole or, or sensible if they have a mental health issue where everybody everybody in this world i miss everybody to some degree have some mental health issues i'm telling you you have people walking in in suit and tie and 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 you know skirt and blows looking all formal you know in an lawyer wig and they have mental health issues everybody have it to be without mental health issues is strange that is not normal right and so it is important that you pay attention to your mental health you understand intrusive thoughts are one of the things that really 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 i say really you know um affect a lot of people and when it is not being treated properly you're not having the right coping mechanisms then it, it it opens the door for other things because after a while this thing can set in your brain it can become cultured in your brain you understand where it's like it can't be reversed at all and you can live a whole life so persons with certain form of OCDs, when they just take it and say, oh, that's me, it's okay. Yeah, you doing yourself a great danger, right? And then after a while, it's like it become a part of your life. The dysfunction becomes a part of your life. But I am here. I have a great desire for this. And I believe my healing and deliverance ministry in this season is focused a lot on this because of things that I have gone through right and so you know i encourage you you need healer inner healing you want to live uh 
I can't say stress-free life, but a life where you are able to cope when stress comes. It doesn't overwhelm you. It doesn't take you over. It doesn't affect you being fully functioned in your own mind, right? In your own self, in your family, at your job, in your community, right? I'm here to help you. If you want to book a session with us, currently I'm just, because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, I'm just charging for time, right? It's just, what, $10 right now? And this is going to be so for a couple months because I'm giving persons the opportunity, right, to um, to put themselves in the position of, you know, being healed. It's a journey. It takes time. But it is your inheritance. Healing is your inheritance. Do not allow the enemy to rob you. All right. God bless you.